Okay guys, so in this video we're looking at probability functional skills at key end. It's a lesson for your preparation for your NCFE examination, okay? So yeah, this so this will be lesson hopefully lesson seven at the time of recording this. Okay, so this is your starter guys. Okay, so pause the video, have a go at the question or questions, and then press play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay. So answers for these. Question number one, list all the factors of 10. So factors are numbers that go into 10, okay, without a remainder. That's one, two, five, and 10, okay? These are the four numbers that, okay, that go into 10 with zero remainder. So one, two, five, and 10, okay? This is question number two. Write eight times ten to the three, or eight times ten cubed, as an ordinary number. So ten cubed means ten times ten times ten, which is a thousand. So it's eight times a thousand, or eight multiplied by a thousand, which is equal to eight thousand, guys. Okay. This is question number three. Find 50% of 10. So 50% of any quantity, I divide it by 2. So 10 divided by 2, okay, a half 10, which is equal to 5. Okay, think of it as 100% is equal to 10. Okay, 50% is equal to a half of 10, which is 5. Question number 4. Find the mode of these data, okay, or these words. Okay, chocolate bar, rubber, Ruler, rubber. So rubber appears twice. So rubber is the mode. Okay, so the word mode means most occurring or most frequent. Okay, so the answer is rubber because rubber appears twice, whilst ruler and chocolate bar only appear once, okay, consecutively. Question number five write 900 in standard form. Start with the same as saying nine times 10 to the power of two. So it's a number between one and 10 times 10 to the power of something, so that'd be 9, okay, 9 9.0, or 9 times 10 to the power of 2, 9 times 10 squared, okay, 10 squared, remember, means 10 times 10, okay, which is 100, 9, lots of 100 is equal to 900, okay, 9 times 100 is equal to 900. Question number 6, how many sides does a triangle have? A triangle has three sides, okay, so this is what a triangle looks like, okay, it has three sides. Question number 7, simplify 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 1, so 2 cubed times 2 to the 1. If it has the same base and I'm multiplying, I just add the powers. So I have 2 to the 3 plus 1, which is equal to 2 to the 4. So 2 to the power of 4, guys. This next one, question number 8, 4 times 4 divided by 2. So using bid mass, I'm going to do the division first. So 4 times, well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 4 lots of 2. So 4 times 2, okay, because this answer gives me the number 2. So then I have 4 times 2, 4 lots of 2, which is 8, guys. Okay, so you're always following bid mass. Okay, remember bid mass when you have order of operations. Okay, when you have multiple operations in any given sum. Okay, brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Question number nine, simplify nine fifteenths. Well, the highest common factor is equal to three. So divide top and bottom by three, and I get three fifths. Okay, these are what I call equivalent fractions. Okay, so those three fifths. Yeah, is a fraction in its simplest form. Okay, so dividing top and bottom by three, guys. Okay, because three is what I call the highest common factor. So the highest number that goes into both nine and fifteen cleanly without a remainder is three. Okay, so divide top and bottom by three, and I get three fifths. Question number 10, convert 10 kilograms to grams. Well, I'm going to times by 1,000. Okay, kilograms to grams, you multiply by 1,000. So 10 times 1,000 is equal to 10,000. Okay, so 1 
and then four zeros. Okay. And then if you want to, you yeah, put like a comma, just obviously break it up. So you can pronounce it obviously clearly. That's your answer for that question. Okay. There your answers, guys, okay, for this question. Right, so learning outcomes. So today's lesson, we are going to define probability, develop an understanding how to correctly write probability. So how to correctly write, write probability and calculate prob probability from examples. Okay, so what is probability? So probability in, in like short guys is the chance of an event occurring or not occurring. So the chance of something happening. So for example, flipping a coin, okay, there is a chance that I'll get a head and there's a chance that I'll get tails, okay? Rolling a dice or a die, okay? The chance of that, yeah, obviously, yeah, it is going to obviously be different, okay? Yeah, obviously different numbers, okay? But, yeah, if, if we class it as, like, an ordinary die, then, yeah, it has that equally, yeah, yeah, like equal and fair outcome, okay? Many events can't be predicted with total certainty. The best we can say is how likely they are to happen using the idea of probability, okay? So, learning outcome one, yeah, define probability. Okay, so key words for probability case okay, so yeah, so I've mentioned these here yeah, very, very briefly. So certain means yeah, it's a hundred percent chance, so something will definitely happen. Okay, likely something isn't certain, but there is a chance that it will happen. Even chance, something is as likely to happen as it is it as it is not likely to happen. Unlikely, something isn't impossible, but it probably won't happen. And impossible, there's no chance at all of something happening. Okay, and yeah, and I'm sure you can all think of yeah, some obviously some examples here for like certain, likely, even chance here, yeah, unlikely, impossible. So, for example, for certain, yeah, it is certain yeah that if someone's in a job, that they will obviously pay what we call taxes. Okay, yeah, so taxes yeah is obviously certain, yeah, for that. Okay, yeah, and then the thing. Okay. So this next part, numbers to describe probability. If something is impossible, it has a probability of zero. Okay, so zero percent. An even chance, the probability of zero point five, a half or fifty percent. Again, so probability can be expressed as a decimal, a fraction, or a percentage. So yeah, so that's obviously our decimal. That's our fraction. And that's our percentage, okay, at the end. So probability can be expressed as a decimal fraction or a percentage. Okay, so certain equals probability of 1.0 or 1 whole or 100%. Okay, yeah, probability yeah, is obviously going to be 1. Likely probability between 0 0.5 and 1, so the more likely the, the probability that is closer to 1. Unlikely the probability between 0 0.5 and 0 less than like, sorry, and 0 less likely the closer it is to 0. Okay, so I can write this on like a, yeah, like a probability scale. So you've got 0 there, 0 0.25, yeah, over a quarter chance, an even chance, so you can toss a coin here and land the, land the heads. Okay. So that's obviously even chance. Okay, because you've got heads or tails. Okay. Um, yeah, Valentine's Day being on the 14th of February, so that's obviously certainly obviously every year. Okay, you can even mention yeah about about like obviously like Pi Day or Pancake Day, yeah, being on like certain days of the year. So Pi Day, yeah, it is always in March, okay. Because Pi is so the number Pi, okay. Is 3.14. See, yeah, dot, dot, actually, yeah. So it's always 14th of March. Okay, so that's always certain. Okay, you 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 also got like other days. Yeah, so you have like pancake days. Let's say. Days. Yeah, like for example, you might have like yeah, like paying taxes. So like yeah, that's obviously certain if you're in work. So paying taxes, okay, and there's lots out there, yeah, like that, okay. Like another one could be a yeah, Christmas being on the 25th of December every year, okay, yeah, so on and so forth, yeah, Boxing Day being on 26th, 
yeah, and so on and so forth. Okay, so yeah, so feel free to, to obviously pause the video and obviously make, make your own statements here on some of these. Okay, for zero, okay, obviously it's impossible, okay, let's say, yeah, so let's say it's a Monday, it's impossible, yeah, obviously tomorrow, yeah, will we'll obviously be like a Sunday, okay, yeah, if we assume that we're on a Monday, yeah, so like, yeah, so certain things are impossible, like that, okay, um, yeah, there, there, there are other things, yeah, that are obviously impossible, yeah, that, that I can't actually think of actually right now, but yeah, um, yeah, for example, actually, yeah, so, like, so, so, for example, um, like, at, at the time of, yeah, of, obviously, recording this, yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, lockdown, yeah, and COVID, actually, yeah, that's already happened, okay, so, 2020, yeah, has happened, so, 2020, yeah, will never happen again, ever, okay, oh, sorry, or, or will happen again, Okay, that that's obviously going to be zero, isn't it? Because obviously, yeah, obviously we will never obviously have twenty twenty again, yeah, in our lifetime. Okay, yeah, because obviously dates yeah are always moving forward. Okay. Yeah, another one could be yeah, obviously yeah that it's impossible to obviously be alive forever. Obviously, yeah, so, sorry to, to, to sound like a bit dim and gloomy actually, but yeah, I'm like, if it's obviously yeah, it's impossible to obviously be alive forever. Okay, yeah, because obviously everything yeah, obviously terminates eventually. Yeah, sorry to sound a bit gloom there, I apologise. Um, that, okay, yeah, and think of some of the ones, yeah, for other, like, likely and unlikely, okay? Um, for unlikely, you could say, yeah, it's, it's unlikely to, like, snow in June, you could say. So, snow in June, okay, because, like, snow, snow in June, yeah, like, in the UK. Um, yeah, because, obviously, June is considered, like, a summer month. And for likely, you could say, yeah, like, um, snow in in December, for example. It's unlikely, yeah, that you will roll a one, yeah, on a six-sided dice. that okay so on and so forth okay again there are so many out there yeah, for obviously even chance and all that so example one the following cards are placed in a box a card is selected at random okay find the probability that the number on the card for part eight is a number three where well, you've got one out of one two three four five six so you've got one out of six possible outcomes so one sixth or one sixth okay part b an odd number so an odd number is one three or five so that'd be three out of a total possible of six okay so three sixths or I can simplify that yeah, to one half. Okay, either answer will suffice. Okay, but for the purpose of today's video, I'll leave it as three sixths. Okay, just obviously me and yeah, make it clear on where I got my answers from. Okay. So this next one, Thomas has example two. Thomas has twelve cards, each with a letter on it. You've got Corbett Maths. He picks a card at random. Write down the probability that the chosen card is a letter H, well that would be 1 out of 12, okay, so 1 twelfth, okay, for part B, the letter T, well I've got 1, 2, 3, so I've got 3 twelfths, okay, which simplifies to 1 quarter, okay, but again, the purpose of today is, is, is obviously actually working out the actual probability, so I don't want to see yeah, obviously dwelling here yeah, on the actual yeah, so like simplifying, as long as you yeah, were happy with how we get the probability, then that's here yeah, the most important part here yeah, for today's lesson. For part C, not the letter E, so there's 1 E, so not E will be 11 twelfths, okay, because the probability of getting an E will be 1 twelfth, so the probability that it's not letter E is what I call the complementary. So yeah, so it's one takeaway, one twelfth, okay, and one whole can be written as twelve twelfths. When you work it out, you get eleven twelfths, or eleven twelfths, twelfths, okay. For part D, 
the letter B or the letter T. So it's an or here. So the or means an addition. So we've got one, two, three, four. So it will be four twelfths, which simplifies to one third. Okay, divide top and bottom by four. But again, I'll leave my answer as that. Okay, because it didn't actually say actually yes, actually say actually simplify. Okay, yeah, so I don't want to obviously worry about that. Part E, a vowel. So a vowel is either A, E, I, O, U. Okay, so we've got one here. We've also got another one. We've also got an O. So we've got three twelfths, okay? Which again simplifies to one quarter, but I leave my answer is three twelfths. Okay. Example three Liam rolls an ordinary fair six sided dice. Write down the probability that he gets the number four, where well, you've got the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. So the probability that I'm going to get a four is one out of a possible six. Okay, six possible answers, okay, or six possible outcomes. So it's one sixth. Okay. For part B, a number less than five. One, two, three, four. So you've got one, two, three, four. So the answer will be four sixths because I can have four, three, two, one. Okay, so that will give me uh, four outcomes out of the total possible six, which simplifies to two thirds. Okay. I'll write four sixths there. Okay. Come on. Okay, so calculate probability here. So sometimes you may need to work out the probability of something happening. So, yes, so, so yeah, we've just done a few there. Example Sam is a hockey club coach. He divides the team of 16 players by asking each player to draw a ticket at random of the hat. The hat contains four green, four red, four blue, and four purple. Look here. Yeah, it is obviously colour coordinated here. What's the probability that the first player picking a blue ticket will that be four out of four plus four plus four plus four? So that'd be sixteen. Okay, if you're not sure, yeah, we'll just do it up here. Four plus four plus four plus four. Okay, so it's equal to sixteen. So there are sixteen possible outcomes. Okay, so yeah, possible of sixteen. Outcomes in total is four sixteenths, which simplifies to one quarter, divide top and bottom by four. So the fraction element is one quarter. Now a quarter is a percentage, hopefully you're happy with, that can write it out of a hundred. Okay. So we multiply top and bottom. So we multiply the denominator by 25 and the numerator by 25 okay, yeah, to make it an equivalent fraction. So it's 25 hundredths, okay, and there's a percentage that will equal to 25%, because the word percent means per 100, okay, for the decimal, well that would be 25 divided by 100, okay, which is equal to 0 0.25, okay. Think of it as like this, guys, yeah, so 25.0 divided by 100 years, so decimal point moves two places to the left, okay, so it goes there, it's 0 0.25, okay, 0 0.25, or 250, okay, 0 0.25, or 0 0.250, okay, put, put in a zero here, the initial doesn't actually change my answer here, for that, okay, that's okay, so my answer goes to 0.25, okay, or 0 0.25, Okay, guys, so it's now your turn to have a go at these questions. So pause the video, try the questions here on these next two slides, and then check back with me for your answers, okay? Okay, so answers for these. Question number one, George rolls a standard six, standard fair six-sided dice. Part A, what's the probability that he rolls an even number? Well, you've got two, four, six, so you've got three out of a possible six Outcomes. Okay, you can think of it as a number. What numbers? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. 
for part B, what's the probability that he rolls an odd number? That would be 1, 3, and 5. So that would be 3 sixths, okay, or equal to a half. Okay, either one's going to be fine. For part C, what's the probability that he rolls a square number? So a square number, remember, is a number that times by itself, and I get a number. So, for example, 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 is a square number. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 is a square number. 3 times 3 is 9, okay? Square number. Obviously, yeah, I'm, I, like, I can't obviously go past nine here because it's a six-sided dice. So I've got one, two, so it's going to be two sixths, okay, or one third, okay. Again, yeah, for the purposes of this video, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not actually too concerned, obviously, about simplifying. But yeah, feel free to, to obviously simplify yeah if you feel comfortable. So, okay, remember that's three sixths times simplifies to a half, okay, divide top and bottom by three. Okay, because that's my highest common factor, and then for two sixths, they're both even, so I can divide top and bottom by two, and I get one third. Okay, so hopefully you're happier with simplifying it or cancelling down fractions. Okay. Question number two: Jill is selling twenty sh shirts, five blue, eight white, three red. The rest are black. What is the probability of choosing a red shirt? Well, that'll be three twentieths, because there are three red shirts out of a total possible twenty. For part B, what is the probability of choosing a black or a white shirt? So the word or means that I'm going to add my numbers together out of 20. So the probability that it's a white shirt is going to be 8 twentieths. The probability is yeah, it's going to be a black shirt. Well, the remaining is going to be black. So 5 plus 8 is 13, plus 3 is going to be 16. So plus 4 twentieths. Okay, and I get the answer of 12 twentieths. Okay, which simplifies to three fifths. Okay, dividing top and bottom by four. Okay, again, at this stage, I'm not too concerned yet about the simplifying, as long as we are happier about getting the probability answer or answers. Okay, question number three. Brandon has three types of sandwiches. They there are six ham and cheese, ten BLTs and four tuna sandwiches if he picks one at random what is the probability that he chooses a blt that'll be 10 out of a possible 6 plus 10 plus 4 so that'll be 20 so 10 twentieths which simplifies to one half divide top and bottom by 10 okay or just get rid of a zero okay yeah so just knock off a zero yeah for part B, if he picks one at random, what is the probability that he chooses a BLT or ham and a cheese sandwich? So BLT or ham. Okay, so that'd be so BLT, so that'd be ten twentieths. Or ham, so that's gonna be plus six twentieths. And then it says here and now the word and means that I actually multiply. So I'm gonna work this out and then I'm gonna multiply by the probability that he, that he gets a cheese sandwich. Okay. So oh sorry, ham beauty or sorry, ham and cheese. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm I am i am i made a mistake here. Sorry, ham and cheese, yeah. It, yeah, it is gonna be together actually. Yeah, so you're fine to ignore me, sorry. Should be sixteen twentieths. Which simplifies to four fifths, dividing top and bottom by four. Question number four: Elisa or Alicia has a box of newborn puppies, three black Labradors, four chocolate Labradors, and a golden retriever. She chooses one at random without looking. What is the probability that she, she chooses a black Labrador? That will be three out of three plus four plus one. That would be Eight. So the answer is three eighths. For part B, what is the probability that she chooses a golden retriever? That'll be one eighth. Okay, or one eighth. One eighth. Okay. For that. Okay, question number five, guys. So Zakira has a bag of um, containing yeah, 30 red marbles and 10 blue marbles. She reaches in the bag and picks one at random. What is the probability that she picks a red marble? That would be 30 out of a total possible 30 plus 10, which is going to be 40. So it's 30 fortieths, which simplifies to three quarters. For part B, what is the probability that she grabs a white marble? 
So that obviously be zero here. So it's zero out of 30 here because there are no white marbles there. So again, yeah, so make sure, yeah, yeah, it is obviously trying to obviously trick you there. Okay, yeah, because, yeah, it only has red or blue only. So it has no marbles. So probably, probably to get a, uh, a white, it's going to be zero. Okay, yeah, because it's impossible for it to happen. Okay, question number six. Fraser is a an European roulette wheel. Among the 37 numbers available, there is a green zero. Okay, the rest are red and black. In even amounts, what is the probability of getting a red number? Okay, so there is a green zero. So that means yeah, I'm, I, I'm going to knock off one. So 37 take away one is going to be 36. And 36 here is shared with red and black evenly. So divide that by two and I'm going to have 18. So the probability of getting a red number that will be 1837 okay because that's the total number available for part b an american roulette wheel has 38 numbers that is the same as a european wheel with an addition of a green double zero so a green double zero has the probability of landing on a green number doubled so on a green double zero Well, yes, it has, yes, because obviously double zero yeah, means that, yeah, it is going to go above, yeah, so, or, yeah, let's just think about it, yeah, so if it has 38 numbers and I've doubled it, well, initially, I, I, would, I would have one thirty seventh on the first one, whereas this one, I would have 2 over 38. Now, are these both equal? Well, they're not, no. So, I've times that by two, but then I've times that by a number less than two. Okay. So we have, yes. Yeah, so so it's not actually doubled, okay? Because for it to actually double, then yeah, it it it'd have to be two thirty seventh. So the answer is no, actually. So the answer is actually no, okay? Because for it to actually double, then I'm yeah, I'm just doubling the num uh num yeah the numerator, and not actually the denominator, okay? Because that simplifies yeah to one. 19th okay and that is bigger than this okay but yeah it's not actually double it okay because double 137th will be 237th okay so hopefully that makes sense which style of roulette wheel has a higher probability of landing on a black okay well it is going to be this one isn't it because yeah obviously i've got 37 outcomes here yeah, so I'm going to have 18 37th. Because the second one, the American Relay, actually, yeah, will be, if yeah, if it is actually halved, okay, then, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it would actually be 18 out of 38, which is obviously smaller than 18 37th, okay? Think of it as the smaller your denominator of a fraction, the bigger, yeah, the, the actual amount is, yeah, if that makes sense, okay? So hopefully it makes sense, guys. Sorry if I'm actually going a bit um, off topic here. Sorry if I'm actually confusing you, but hopefully it makes sense. Okay. Question number seven. The manager of a football team assigns 20 players, um, a number each, one to eight. Okay. For defenders, nine to 16. And for midfielders, 17 to 20. For forwarders, okay. And 916 here from, from midfielders and 1720 forwards. A team captain chooses one at random and, the, and that player joins the team. Part A. What is the probability that their choice is a midfielder? So that'll be 916. So that'll be 7 out of 20. Okay, yeah, because think of it as player 9, player 10, player 11, player 12, player 13, player 14, player 15, and player 16. Okay. Actually, sorry, yeah, it should be 8 20ths, yeah, it should be 8 20ths when you work it out, yeah, when you count it, okay. Yep, so it's going to be 8 20ths, which simplifies 2 2 fifths, dividing top and bottom by 4. For part B, what's the probability that their choice is a forward? So you've got 17, 18, 19, 20. So you've got 4 20ths. 
exactly because you've got player 17 player 18 player 19 player 20 here which i get that okay so that's supposed to one fifth okay so be be very careful guys here with those questions Okay, so last set of questions today, yeah, and then that will obviously be, uh, be the end of the show of today's lesson. So question number eight, okay, Poppy is flying from London to Madrid. She arrives with nine centre seats, three window seats, and three aisle seats available. When she reaches the desk, she is given a seat at random. Express the probability that she does not have a centre seat. Okay, so not a centre seat. Well, that would be... 3 plus 3 is going to be 6, so that means 6 out of 9 plus 3 is 12 plus 3 is going to be 15, so 6 fifteenths, which simplifies, so divide top and bottom by 3, and I get 2 fifths, so 2 fifths is a decimal, so 2 divided by 5, okay, if we're not sure, a little bust up to the side here does no harm, so 2 is into 5, Okay, put a decimal point and a zero. Fives into two, I cannot do. Bring decimal point. Okay, so nine decimal point there. So bring it up, carry the two. Fives and 20 go four times. So your answer is 0 0.4 or 0 0.40. As a percentage, I would do 0 0.4 multiplied by 100. Okay, so decimal point moves two places to the right. So one, two, and we get the answer of 40. So it's 40 percent guys okay this is question number nine okay lauren picks a random card from a standard pack of 52 divided equally amongst four suits okay spades clubs hearts and diamonds they are then assigned the value of ace two to ten jack queen or king for part A, what is the probability that she picks a picture card, Jack, Queen, or King? Well, she can have, okay, so three, okay, and then I'm going to times it by four because, yeah, obviously I've got four different, you know, like, um, suits, okay, so I'm going to have 12 over 52, okay, divide top and bottom by four, and we get three, um, three-thirteenths, okay, so half it and then half it again, okay, for part B, what's the probability that she picks a spade or chooses a spade, well, that'll be, yeah, that'll obviously be a quarter, so that'll be 13 out of 52, okay, which simplifies to one quarter, okay, dividing top and bottom by 13, okay, yeah, because obviously a spade, you'll obviously have, yeah, um, yeah, ace of spades, and then, yeah, 2 to 10, and then jack, queen, or king, yeah, so that will give you 13, so 1, and you got 8 there, 9, 10, 11, yeah, sorry, you got 9 there, 10, 11, 12, 13, okay, hence why, yeah, I get that, okay, so I think it'd be a yeah, divided by 4, okay, question number 10, Part A, the probability of Jane and her partner winning a tennis match is 0 0.6. What is the probability that they don't win the match? Well, that would be 1 take away 0 0.6. 1 take away 0 0.6 is equal to 0 0.4. Okay, again, I can do it as like a column subtraction. Yeah, if I'm not too sure. Think that as 1.0 take away 0 0.6. Okay, line up decimal. 0 take away 6, I can't do, so I have to borrow. That goes to 0, that goes to 1. 10 take away 6 is 4. Decimal point lines up. 0 take away 0 is going to be 0. So I get 0 0.4. For part B, assuming the probability of winning a match is independent of all three of all other results, what is the probability that they will win three games out of three? So, yeah, so I would do not. Um, so I do 0 0.6 here times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6, okay. Or I can write it here as a fraction if I want to show it here. So 0 0.6 as a fraction is 3 fifths. We've got 3 fifths times 3 fifths times 3 fifths, which gives you, okay, um, 3 times 3 times 3 is going to be 27. So you're going to get 27 out of 125. So 27 125th. Okay, total 27 out of 125. Okay, yeah. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. Okay, so 27 125th for that one.
Okay, question number 11. A spinner has a probability of landing on a 1 with a probability of 0 0.3. What is the probability that if it's spun 3 times, it does not land on 1 or 3 times? Well, the probability that it doesn't land on 1, okay, so this is my notation here for probability, so not on 1, will be 1 take away 0 0.3, which is 0 0.7. Yeah, and then obviously if it's three spins, then I'm going to do 0 0.7 times three, okay? So, it, yeah, it, it does not actually land on one, okay? And I get 0 0.21. Okay, if it's spun three times, so you do three, multiplied by 0 0.7 sorry so the answer should be sorry so the answer should be 2.1 sorry obviously yeah, in this context here yeah, it doesn't actually make much sense here yeah, but we're assuming that if it's spun three times yeah it, it is expected yeah that two of the three times yeah it, it will not actually land on one based on this probability yeah, if that makes sense Okay, so it's a probability of the event not happening times by the number of times yeah, the event occurs. So this is what I call yeah, expected frequency yeah, or relative frequency. Okay, yeah, it's the number of times the event happens multiplied by the probability yeah, of the event happening. Okay, or in this case, yeah, multiplied by the probability of the event not happening, which can be 0 0.7. Okay, so if it's spun three times, we would expect that it doesn't land on one two out of the three times yeah or two point one out of the three times okay obviously two point one yeah doesn't actually make sense in this context but yeah if you assume yeah roughly yeah two out of the three times it will not land on one if it's spun three times okay yeah in this context okay right guys so this is our conclusion here so have we met our outcomes yes okay so define probability yep so i'm happy with that Developing and understanding yeah i've had to write write probability correctly yeah so using the scale Okay, from ranging from 0 to 1. Calculate probability, probability from example here. So we've done plenty of practice. Yeah, make a note of one thing that you've learned today. So, yeah, so make a note here. So the key thing to remember here yeah, is probability must always add up to 1. Okay, so that's like, like a key fact today. So probability must always add up to the number 1. Okay, or add up to 100%. Okay, it can't ever go above 100%. Okay, yeah. So one or in brackets hundred percent okay right guys so that's the end of today's lesson yeah looking at probability yeah, for functional skills maths for the ncfe course okay hopefully you found it useful okay thank you for obviously tuning in this year and thank you obviously yeah, for taking your time yeah, to listen yeah, and watch the video okay any questions any queries let me know okay and i'll see you in the next okay take care guys see, see you soon okay bye